Thank you. Well, hello, everybody. Good evening. My name is Jason Cordova, and I am a executive board trustee. I've been part of the Astronomical Society for about two years now. And um, this is a project that's been almost 10 years in the making. Um, uh, when I uh, attended uh, the Metropolitan State University of Denver, I, uh, my senior experience course uh, was a project that modeled, uh, well, the senior experience course was an STK course, uh, comprehensive training, um, which is uh, basically a physics modeling software. Um, and we uh, did some different things with it, and it led to me publishing a paper, which is going to be coming out here in December. Um, basically, for whether you're familiar with STK or not, uh, it's basically a powerful physics modeling software used by companies such as SpaceX to uh, model uh, mission architecture. Basically, you see what your satellite's going to do when you put it in space. Um, and it is a very uh, striking visual component to it. Um, while I was uh, learning to use this program, I recognized how neat it would be to apply it to archaeoastronomy. So I mentioned it to my professor. We, um, we found a student who was experienced with uh, light wave computer modeling. And we basically did a proof of concept constructed uh, a series of uh, structures in light wave and in, incorporated them into the STK model. Um, we entered it into the university grant competition for uh, STK, uh, or the AGI, Analytical Graphics Incorporated. Um, their university grant competition, we won an honorable mention that year. Uh, the next year, um, another group of students picked it up and uh, named it after me, the Cordova Project, and took it uh, a few steps farther. What I'm passing around is a, an article that was uh, published in the Metro Magazine, so the University Alumni Magazine, uh, about that project that they did. Um, and what they did was we, we modeled, uh, what Kyle and I modeled was uh, two structures in Chichen Itza, Mayan structures in Chichen Itza, uh, central Mexico and the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, they uh, are, uh, one of them, El Caracol, the other, um, El Castillo, the, essentially the, the pyramid and the observatory. Um, and all we were doing was trying to demonstrate that they uh, point to certain celestial objects at certain times of year. What the Cordova project did was um, did this same thing um, and used uh, MATLAB uh, as, the, as the means to incorporate the, the uh, model structures into the program. And uh, this is actually a video. Hopefully it'll work. Nope. All right. Um, this is actually on YouTube. If, if you want to uh, look, see it actually in action. But that's basic idea of what it looks like in the program. Um, uh, and what they did, um, uh, so essentially El Castillo, or the Pyramid of Kukulkan, is um, a graphical representation of the Mayan calendar. It uh, not only uh, has these celestial alignments, but also has what is believed to be uh, maybe a, an observable uh, record comparable to Egypt in the uh, uh, the Cordova project. Students discovered that there there were some similarities to their model of the Giza plateau and the uh, and the Chichen Itza site. Not to say that Chichen Itza itself is as old as ancient Egypt, just again that there may be evidence of an observable record comparable to that time frame and uh, sun. And what happens is we have a star that uh, is we know as Polaris that just happens to be uh, 
a reasonably bright star in the direction uh, that tends to stay in in the uh, near the cardinal direction of north. Uh, but that doesn't stay that way over the course of many thousands of years. In fact, it wobbles around and uh, goes to, it takes about 26,000 years to make that entire cycle. Um, break down of that cycle uh, into three, uh, I'm sorry, five, break that into five, roughly 5,000 year intervals and we get um, what appears to be uh, intervals that are documented in the Mesoamerican calendar as observed through the STK model. Now, uh, this, what sort of evidence do we have to corroborate this? Um, and what what can be learned from living contemporary uh, knowledge keepers of those traditions. Um, one of those individuals is a gentleman named uh, Don Miguel, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mayan elder and day keeper, Don Miguel Chiquin. He's, uh, in 2011, he was uh, welcomed by the Chicano Studies Department at the Metro State and he was granted permission by his Council of Elders to share this information. Um, he actually spent some time going around uh, to numerous universities and um, other uh, cultural centers. Uh, right around that time, kind of in preparation for the whole 2012 scare, trying to dispel a little bit of that, um, the nonsense surrounding the end of the world sort of thing. And as, uh, as uh, he shared, there's uh, the Mayan calendar is a, a, a very complex system with, uh, full of cycles within cycles. One uh, very simple breakdown uh, is as follows. It's basically, you have on the basic level, a 260-day count that's called the Tolkien, the 365-day solar year that's called the Hob, 52-year cycle, which is referred to as the calendar round, and a 394 year cycle, which is a Bakhtun or long count. Um, and what basically was happening at, in December 21st, 2012, was the end of the 13th Bakhtun, which uh, corresponds to a 5,000 year or so cycle, and the end of the 13th Bakhtun, the beginning of a new cycle, um, which is referred to in this context as the uh, moving from the fourth to the fifth sun in the Mayan or in the Mayan cosmology. Um, so going back to the Cordova project, some of the things that were corroborated uh, were this um, 5,000 year cycle. Uh, and basically, if we break it down this way, December 21st, 2012, is the winter solstice combined, uh, coinciding with the end of the 13th Bakhtun, 13th Bakhtuns are equal to 5,122 years. A full Earth procession cycle takes 25,770 years. An average polar star phase, basically the time it takes for Earth to process from Thuban to Polaris, observably aligned in the cardinal north direction, and then to Alcura and Deneb Signi, is 4,549 years. And that is uh, what was observed through the model that we used in STK. This breaks down to 5.66 polar star phases in the precession cycle. So five times 5,122 equals 25,610, which is only 160 off from the uh, 25,770 year precession cycle that we observed with STK. Right? Uh, <laughs> So, therefore, with respect to the traditional Mayan teachings, polar star, the polar star cycle, cycle closely coincides with the Bakhtun. The Aztec uh, tradition also uh, uses a similar, uh, similar system. The Aztec calendar is referred to as the Tonalpuali. Um, and we also have uh, local 
representatives of that tradition here who have knowledge of it and teach it, one of which is my teacher, David Atekpatsin Young. Um, he is a co-founder of a group called Kalmekatslan, which is an institute of indigenous scholarship and praxis. Uh, and he shares that this is a, the, the calendar is not only a, uh, a, a way of keeping time, but just a, a compendium of, of art, uh, science, and culture. Um, most people recognize the sunstone as the, the physical graphical representation of the Tonal Puali, similar to the Mayan version as the Pyramid of Kukulkan is the uh, most recognizable uh, graphical or physical representation of that calendar. Um, the two communities have uh, a lot of similarities. Uh, basically, things uh, were collaborated and borrowed, and uh, very um, objectively, we can refer to the Mesoamerican calendar and uh, inform knowledge between the Toltec, Aztec, and Mayan systems. Um, some of the main similarities are that the uh, the civil calendars bear striking similarities with the 5,122 year intervals and the long count, um, and again corroborated by STK. Um, other evidence of Mayan procession knowledge uh, is presented by Susan Milbrath. Uh, basically looking at the Pleiades as um, uh, markers of the beginning and end of the wet and dry seasons and so forth, um, tracking their procession over time. Um, Milbreth uh, proposes that in the time of the Toltecs, or who preceded the Aztecs and the Mayans, um, could have observed this from that time, which is uh, about, we're looking at about 25,000 years. So from uh, May 7th in 500 BCE, um, moving on to May 29th in about 1500, right around the time of the conquest. Um, so that uh, expresses that uh, people would have been able to observe this idea of procession and then uh, build it into their calendrical systems. Um, so a couple, just to kind of wrap up the idea and the concept is that uh, this is a time of uh, tremendous, uh, we have a lot more technology and resources to put into these kinds of studies. The combination of a, uh, a, a aerospace physics modeling software with combined with uh, archaeoastronomy. Um, we don't need to go grave rob or dig up any graves or disturb sacred sites. We're modeling these. We, we took uh, satellite images in order to uh, assess the most accurate representations of these structures, import them into the modeling software, and demonstrate these alignments, and corroborate them with living knowledge practitioners of the people who built them. Um, so uh, it creates an opportunity for a lot of collaboration in interdisciplinary science. Um, this is a project that I'm very excited is uh, finally coming together. Um, it's going to be published with the uh, Society for Cultural Astronomy in the American Southwest. Um, the publication is going to be called Before Borders, Revealing the Greater Southwest uh, Ancestral Cultural Landscape. Uh, and SCAAS Multimedia Publications. Um, it's going to be available on Amazon Kindle and direct publishing. So you can get a hard copy or get it uh, electronically. And hopefully, um, once that comes out, uh, I'm happy to, uh, I would love to come back and go into even more detail um, if, you'd, if you'd like to hear it. Um, and uh, any questions, you can contact me, email, and uh, I'm, I'm around, so thank you.
Jason, how did those old guys figure that stuff out? <laughs> uh, a lot of patience and a lot of uh, paying attention. Are you getting that master's through this uh, paper or a doctor? I'll take one if you want to give it to me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty much. Um, yeah, uh, if we could get in, if a university has a has a program, unfortunately there aren't anybody. Uh, there's only one university in the world that uh, grants a master's in archaeoastronomy, and it's a it's an online course. Yeah. Wow. So, um, anyway, uh, any other questions? Any other specific questions? Or? I've got one. So the construction of my instrument is relatively recent. Correct. Yes. Five thousand years. You're talking a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. You're scaling like five boxes back to twenty-five thousand years. Right. Are you able to observe like intermediate points in boxes that you're mm -hmm. that projecting out? So, so it sounds like you're asking multiple questions as far as observing it in within the SDK model sure. versus um, the actual construction aspect, right? Sure. I guess, yeah. Right. So yes, you're correct. It is believed that the pyramid itself was only built maybe a, maybe a thousand years ago, total. Um, that is to say that they, that's not to say that, like I said, it's a, a physical representation of the calendar. So it's built uh, with the information of that long observational record. Um, the code codices, like the Dresden Codex, for example, are uh, recognized with the Venus tables. Um, these are a long, documenting the long observational record of what they did to build and create the calendar. Um, and you see the pictures of, of Miguel. He has these, there's these little, um, they're like uh, cloth, cloth um, pieces that represent different elements of the calendar itself. And that's actually what they use to teach and work with the calendar today. Um, as far as the uh, model, uh, yes, very simply, we, can, we could run the model back 30,000 years if we wanted to and run it 30,000 years in the future to see where that goes. And that's part of how we came to this idea and led us down this path to try to try to deconstruct a little bit and find out what's going on there. Um, so that's, uh, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot to answer that question with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, all right, I think that's all the time we've got, though. You do? Yeah? So you were talking about using light. Is this one of those things where you took data with something that scanned it in certain Light frequencies, or what kind of equipment would you use? Okay, so um, Light Wave is the name of the uh, 3D computer modeling program that we use to construct the, the, the buildings and import them into STK, which is a physics modeling software. Um, we also used satellite imaging to construct these 3D models in Light Wave the computer program in order to import them, right? Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Thank you.